What's up everybody and welcome to this tale of whether the DJI Osmo Pocket is suitable for vlogging or not. Well, that's actually not exactly true. This video is actually a vlog of our trip to the famous Rainbow Mountains near Cusco in Peru, but circumstances made me use the DJI Osmo Pocket for vlogging instead of my usual gear. But let past me explain. Good morning everyone. So we are today on this beautiful hike up a mountain, it's the so-called Rainbow Mountain, which is more than 5,000 meters above sea level. The problem is that we forgot to take our SD cards for our cameras, which means that I only have my phone and my DJI Osmo Pocket. So I don't know how it's going to turn out. Anyways, I'm going to try it and share this beautiful scenery with you where we are in at the moment. And thanks to those circumstances, I will actually be able to tell you if I recommend the DJI Osmo Pocket for vlogging. But let's start at the beginning. We got picked up at 4 a.m. in what seemed to be the rainiest day of that week. After two hours of driving, we reached a restaurant where we would have our breakfast and later also our lunch. It's also where I actually realized that we didn't have our memory cards with us. Well, the memory cards for our two main cameras. After that followed another hour of driving uphill until we reached the starting point of our hike. So now we are at an elevation of slightly above 4,600 meters, which is a little less than the high camp was to our Kilimanjaro track. This is where we start our one and a half hours hike up to the viewpoint, which is above 5,000 meters, and I'm already feeling the lack of air. Let me jump in here real quick to tell you about one flaw. The camera is not wide angle enough for what I'm used to or what I would like to have when I'm vlogging. As you see it cut off my head and it doesn't show much of the background even though I'm holding the camera like at an arm's length away from my body. If I use this camera with the wide angle lens I can actually hold it like this close and I will still get the same angle as when I'm holding the DJI Osmo Pocket this far away. But maybe I'm just expecting too much. walked about 30 minutes so far. It's pretty flat, so it's not that tough. It's still doable. It's not as tough as in the Kilimanjaro at this height. I think because we are better adapted. But as you see, it's still not very beautiful. Still, how do you call it, fog all around us. I hope it gets better. Ah yes, the sound. Well, first let me say, I don't have a microphone attached to this camera. I never bought a microphone for the DJI Osmo Pocket because vlogging with it was never the intention, I wanted to use it for other things. But also because I'm used to the GoPro's microphone, which turns out to be actually way better than the one in the Osmo Pocket. Let me play you the same clip, but without boosting the sound. As you see, still not very beautiful. Still, how do you call it, fog all around us. Yeah, you don't hear anything. The sound level is at like minus 50 decibels. I have no idea why that is. That's way too low, which means that in post I have to bump the sound level, which leads to this white noise in the background whenever I'm filming sound. Turns out pretty annoying, and as I said, the GoPro Hero 8, which I have, and supposedly the Hero 9, are way better in this regard. As you can see here, the gimbal is very good at removing the micro jitters, and as long as I'm not walking, the footage seems to be very stable. Walking obviously introduces this kind of annoying up and down movement in this footage and while it is to be expected because it's a tiny motor on the gimbal, the digital hypersmooth stabilization of the GoPros are actually way better suited for my use case. What really disappointed me though is how unstable the footage looks when I'm trying to film something that's close by like in this clip. Shouldn't the gimbal make it really stable? But it's almost like there's no gimbal involved and I find it even looks worse than when I'm hand holding my normal camera and filming. I guess that's also because I expected the gimbal to be stable so I didn't pay that much attention to keep the camera stable. And on the other hand, compared to my normal camera, the DJI Osmo Pocket is really light so it shakes more in my hand than the big camera does. It's been raining a little bit, not raining, I mean snowing. My hands are pretty cold. Right now we have here 15 degrees south of the equator, the same temperature that Switzerland has, like between 0 to 5 degrees. 
and as you see still nothing to see around us still everything with fog and actually something interesting that I learned today is that up here there's not much agriculture the only thing that grows is potatoes alpacas also are the main source of protein and they use alpaca poop to make fire actually right now we should be approaching 4,800 meters of elevation which means that we are practically at the highest point of the European Alps and well the highest point of Europe So far we did the 70% of the flat part, now the steep part is beginning, the last 30% of the way. I think it's going to be pretty steep, but shouldn't be a, much of a problem for me at the moment, because I feel really well. As you see, we now reach a point of death. By that I mean no vegetation anymore. Sure, there are small patches of moss, but it's basically death all around us. As you see, it's still all foggy. We don't see anything. For some reason we managed to choose the rainiest day to come here. The last few days have been sunny. Today we came here. It's been foggy. However, still I'm enjoying the hike, so that's fine here if we don't get to see the mountain. We're doing it. We are reaching the top. 5036 meters of sea level. We did it, we are on top, and as you can see, there's nothing to see here. So, we've been here for like 15 20 minutes. I mean, this part, the sound is really horrible. The DJI Osmo Pocket is here not to blame. It was really windy and all cameras would have trouble with it. Even microphones with dead cats on them. And honestly, I talked for about two and a half minutes in this scene and I have no idea what I said because I cannot understand anything. Experience with cameras. Hey guys. We actually got kind of lucky. Well, it's already hidden again, but we got to see a little bit. I don't care much about that one. See that valley? We even see the colors down there. And it's just beautiful. Never seen anything like that. Wow. A colorful valley with like greens, blues, um, reds, browns. Awesome. Yeah, did you notice how the sound suddenly cut off? How the clip suddenly cut off, actually? And that happened a few times. I was filming something, then when I ended filming, I stopped the recording, well, like I normally do. But now that I'm watching it back, it's like it cut off the last second of my recording. Whenever I stop the recording right as I finish my last sentence, the last sentence would be cut off. That's something really weird. I have no idea if I did something wrong, if it's something that happens with the camera, but that made some clips really annoying to work with. down on horse you can actually see her maybe back there far away but now coming down the fog has dissipated a little bit down here and wow this beautiful they call it a lagoon this is way more worth it than going up for that mountain because this is just magical please to mind and here it happened again the clip suddenly cut off <laughs> Right, running out of battery actually, because I've really been enjoying this scenery that we have here. Now that we are walking down and the fog is gone, it's just, it's just, I don't, I cannot describe it. It's the kind of scenery that I love, like valleys surrounded by high mountains, green, ragged. And here is another situation of where I would have liked if the camera actually showed more of the scene behind me. The angle is just not wide enough and you cannot really see what I'm talking about. You only see my head that's like in half of the frame and the fog in the back. The most important part besides me of course is not really in the frame. Also the battery life is disappointingly short considering that I didn't even film 30 minutes of footage. It might also be because it was really cold and as we know cold weather shortens battery life. So 
she finished and I must say she's like a how do you call it a shiny beacon in a storm or something like that because everywhere she passed it was beautiful you could take the most beautiful pictures as soon as she was gone the the fog mist came I don't know how this worked but That's the horse, yeah. uh, maybe it's the horse <laughs> This last part was actually filmed on my three years old Samsung phone and I actually like the footage more than the one I filmed with the DJI of my pocket. So this concludes my very messy vlog. The reason that I decided to mix a vlog with a review of a camera is that because of the limitations of the DJI Osmo Pocket and me not knowing how to handle or work around those limitations led to not having enough footage to make this vlog the way I wanted it to be and also showed me the limitations of the DJI Osmo Pocket so that I can share them with you. So I decided to mix those two genres together and try something new that I've never done before. My conclusion is simple. In my case, I will not use the DJI Osmo Osmo Pocket again. Certainly not for vlogging. After this video I will sell the DJI Osmo Pocket. I don't really see any use for myself in my gear and I prefer to use the GoPro Hero 8 or in the future maybe the GoPro Hero 9 or a 10 if it's released this year for these kind of situations where I cannot use my normal camera to film, which from time to time happens. It might sound a little bit unfair that I'm comparing the DJI Osmo Pocket and the GoPro. I didn't compare it in the action cam sense, I just compared the two cameras in a vlogging sense. And in that sense, the GoPro Hero 8 is way better than the DJI Osmo Pocket. Anyways, this is the end of the video. Conclusion again, I would not recommend the DJI Osmo Pocket for vlogging. If you want a small camera, get the GoPro Hero 8 or the GoPro Hero 9 now, because it has way less limitations than the DJI Osmo Pocket. Thank you very much for watching. Next time, much picture will be up, so don't forget to subscribe, also comment a little bit, especially if you think that there was some fat with the DJI Osmo Pocket. So thank you very much, and see you again in the next video. Bye-bye. <laughs>